What is up, bro? It's me, Josh, here bringing you another edition of How to Ship. In this series, I'm going over every line in World of Warships, going in-depth on what the strengths, what their weaknesses are, what upgrades, what captain skills I use for them, and kind of the in-depth analysis of the line and what I think about it. This week, we have the USN Cruisers. Now, the USN Cruisers, you either love them or you hate them. It's really just like that. There are some tiers that they're very, very good, and then there's a nasty stretch that's called the Pensacola to the Baltimore uh, that is pretty tough for a lot of people. Just remember though, light at the end of the tunnel, the, the gold pot at the end of the rainbow is the Des Moines at tier 10. This thing is an absolute monster and it is well worth the grind. But this line, it does achieve very, very well at the lower tiers. When you go into the tech tree, you're checking it out. The St. Louis at tier 3 is amazing. The Phoenix, I love the Phoenix. I think the Phoenix is awesome. It was nerfed by the AFT. Omaha is good for tier 5. Cleveland's good, amazing for tier 6. But then you dive into the Pensacola, New Orleans, Baltimore grind. This is the, the grind. These are the hurdle steps, the hurdle ships that you need to get through to get to this amazing thing called the Des Moines. And the Pensacola known as being one of the weakest ships, known as being one of the most hated. Now, I'm not saying these ships are 100% terrible. You can do very well. The New Orleans and the Baltimore are actually pretty good ships, and so is the Pensacola. They just get kind of pooped on a little bit by everyone, and everyone tends to hate them. Uh, it's because the de detectability on the Pensacola is wicked high, so you just get smashed all the time. Uh, the New Orleans kind of just is that older brother of the Pensacola, so it too kind of gets picked on, and the Baltimore as kind of this also another redheaded stepchild of the tier nine cruisers tier nine cruisers are kind of weird and this is by far the worst out of all the tier nines in my opinion now they did make it better with the new orleans and the baltimore having radar all as well as the des moines and so that made the line a little bit more bearable but this stretch right here is going to be the hardest stretch in my opinion outside of aircraft carriers or certain aircraft carriers, this is the hardest stretch in World of Warships, in my opinion. Getting from the Pensacola, actually the New Orleans for its tier is actually pretty good, and the Baltimore is not better with radar, but the Pensacola, New Orleans, Baltimore grind is literally, in my opinion, the hardest and most brutal grind you'll ever do in World of Warships. But once you get past that, you get this all amazing ship called the Des Moines. So, Remember, guys, in the series, I'm going to go over a 15-point captain, so just kind of keep that in mind, and I will show the modules and upgrades that I run for a the, the Des Moines. So if there are missing slots, just take that away. So this is what I run for the Des Moines. Now, the USN cruisers, they're known for having relatively good AP, relatively good HE as well. They're kind of a jack-of-all-trades uh, show-wise. Amazing AA, relatively good frontal armor, and um, most of them have a decent uh, rate of fire. So... But mainly they're AA platforms, so with the current North American meta, they've gotten a bit extra weak, I guess. Um, now on EU, I can't really comment too much because I play almost 100% uh, on North America, but I know there's more aircraft carriers on the EU server. But I mean, even in mid-tiers, the Cleveland, the Pensacola still do relatively well with planes. And of course, a Des Moines at a tier 10, if you are running it, it's almost a no-fly zone for planes. It will just absolutely murder them, assuming you are going a um, some kind of AA spec which most are, even with just AFT, they're pretty good. But this is what I run for the Des Moines. Uh, first slot is main armament mod one. Second slot, I do run the AA mod two. Now this kind of gets away from my rule of specking straight into AA, but really, I think the Des Moines is really, really accurate. The secondaries aren't anything insane or anything worth using, especially in high tiers, and play a bit farther away. Traverse, you don't need it. Secondary, you don't need it. So I think AA is easily the best. Range, I think this is a must for any cruiser. This goes across every cruiser line, in my opinion. I think anything that gives you range, battleships and destroyers are the bad guys. Yes, I know you're supposed to find them, the destroyers and kill them and use your radar, but mainly the battleships, those are the bad guys. Stay as far away from them as possible. Grab the extra range whenever you can in any cruiser. Anytime you can get extra range, whether it be from AFT in lower tiers, uh, gunfire control system mod 2, Always grab range, stay away from those bad battleships, and give yourself a chance to, to survive a bit longer. Now, I took uh, damage control system mod 1. Uh, lesser chance of fire, you could easily take propulsion if you're seeing them lose that. Uh, steering mod, uh, better chance to avoid a torpedo. And concealment. I run concealment on them. You can get the Des Moines down to about 10.6, and then I run the, um, the captain as well. Uh, for up uh, ammunition consumables, they did add, so the 
the New Orleans, the Baltimore, and the Des Moines all have uh, the radar now, so I run premium everything, and I run, instead of Sonai, I guess you could run like a super destroyer hunter build, rolling the hydroacoustic, but I do like running defensive AA. Yes, there's not always uh, CVs and high tiers, but it when there are, it's awesome to have that. Of course, run the hell, the heal, and I run premium everything on this, so I'm going to enable that. I haven't played this since the latest update. Uh, now, for captain specs, now this is what I run. I will add in some alternate and kind of go over some alternate builds for a tier 15 or a level 15 captain, but this is what I'm running right now. So for 15-point captain, I would run a concealment build. Um, the more you can hide, the better, and I would run uh, with the first point, basic firing training, second point, expert marksmanship, Third point, superintendent. Now you could easily take vigilance. You want to be a bit more aggressive. Uh, now fourth perk, this is one that's kind of up to the player, but this is the build I would just start with. I would take AFT. It does help with uh, AA. Now I could hear an argument for demolition expert, but um, we'll go over that in a bit. And concealment expert. So that's the main build I would take. Now an alternate build would literally be switching uh, AFT for demolition expert. Easily could do that, be a bit more aggressive. Uh, weak around planes, so if you're not seeing many aircraft carriers in high tiers, you could easily switch that and just be a bit more aggressive, pump out some more damage. Um, you could also, I've seen a lot of people do it, actually drop Concealment Expert, grab Demo Expert and Advanced Firing Training, uh, the two tier fours, and then pick up uh, uh, basic survivability, help you out with a little bit of repair. Uh, remember, this is just 15, and for low tiers, I would just, I would just stick with... Um, Basic firing training, extra marksmanship, vigilance. I would take vigilance at low tiers because there aren't going to be any consumables worth grabbing, especially like a Omaha or a Phoenix or something like that. Um, I would take uh, demolition expert and then I would take concealment expert. So still take that. But those are the kind of the captain skills I would run. Uh, like I said, there, there's there's several you can change up. I could hear arguments, but I think the most balanced is going to be uh, basic firing training, extra marksmanship, superintendent, AFT and conceal an expert because that'll help you stay alive for a little bit now the highlights of this line literally st louis is amazing at tier three i always recommend people going to usn cruisers to start out with i think it's a fantastic starting line because of the uh strength of the uh, st louis at the lower tiers omaha is a great tier five can be super deadly it's a bit weaker mermats but um an awesome one that they also grind credits to cleveland is amazing at tier six uh actually the, the new orleans isn't isn't bad. I think it's relatively strong tier 8, but the line really gets kind of pooped down because there's so few CVs really constantly playing on North American server right now. But then remember, the pinnacle is going to be uh, is going to be the Des Moines at tier 10. This is kind of what everyone works for. This is the light at the end of the tunnel. When you are going through that stretch of the Pensacola to the Baltimore, do not grind the line. You will burn yourself out. Take it easy to play a couple games there, a couple games here. This is the line to take slow. Be, take a bit slower because if you do just rush down this line, there you're going to burn yourself out on cruisers. Uh, I've had many games, and I was averaging decent damage in the Baltimore, but I was hating that ship at the end of it. Couldn't wait to get rid of it. But just take your time. Go through this line. If you have some free XP, uh, use it to get some modules maybe, maybe past the Pensacola. Like I said, Pensacola, like these aren't bad ships. They just tend to be weak in many situations. So how do you play this? You're going to be playing it a bit more front on using your ability. So if you're going against a, a ship, kind of use the angles you have. You have relatively good frontal armor. Um, use AP on broadside. You will even you will smash even battleships. I will. You can chunk down battleships with AP. It's really insane. You have a decent fire chance on these cruisers as well. So use the HE in certain situations. Like a USN cruiser can absolutely wreck, especially the Cleveland. This thing's amazing. Um, the Cleveland has such a high rate of fire for tier six that if you catch something broadside of some, let's say a Nuremberg, let's say an Omaha, let's say whatever, even up tier into like a Pensacola, a Miyoko, whatever is out there. With the rate of fire and the AP, you can absolutely obliterate it. 12 shells going out, that could be 12 possible citadels. It's insane. So AP on things that are broadside, HE things that aren't giving you a very good uh, angle. But don't get super aggressive with these because they tend to have a citadel problem. Especially the Cleveland's its own little uh, ninth wonder of the world because the, the citadel is actually relatively hard to hit. But stuff like the Pensacola, the Omaha, the New Orleans, the Baltimore, the Des Moines, uh, they're all pretty flat sides. So it's they're kind of, 
a battleship's dream of getting one of you caught broadside. So try to avoid staying broadside. Use your angles. Uh, use the AA as an advantage. I mean, especially if you're going to be running with an aircraft carrier, use your AA. Be his best friend because he will love you because you will be able to absolutely murder planes. Um, and there's also like kind of two ways to play it. You can play a bit more defensive with the uh, Concealment Expert and AFT. And you can also build it very, very aggressive, especially with the high tiers with uh, Demolition Expert kind of doubling up on stuff. Um, I've even seen like kind of a jack of all trades uh, build. I don't know if I'd ca highly recommend that, but that would let you be a bit more or like actually very very aggressive, pump out the radar, um, be an anti DD. Uh, I don't know if it's quite the best, but it is is possible. But all in all, this is a good line. It's just weaker right now, mainly because of the meta. If there were more aircraft carriers, if there were aircraft carriers like in every game, this line would be much stronger. But the reason that it isn't this holy grail of a line that it kind of was in closed beta is because there's a lack of planes and if there were more planes these things would be much more scary i mean if if there is a cv you're gonna avoid these and they're still <laughs> you still have to be careful if, if you're a Ryujo, if you're an indie you're not going near cleveland because you're gonna lose your planes so in that aspect they're still strong but just strong in certain situations I do recommend going down the line. They can do a very, very good job. Like I said, there's a ton of premium ships too. The Atlanta, the Indianapolis, uh, the Marblehead. So you can kind of get some extra uh, extra XP done. And if you got the Flint, there's also that as well. So there are some good ships. Uh, it has the strength of the radar and a good rate of fire. So all in all, I do like this line. I think it just has some downsides. And it just so happens to be kind of three ships in a row. Like I said, they're not terrible ships. They just tend to be weak and can tend to kind of underperform um, damage-wise and kind of playstyle-wise. But um, let me know what you guys think of the uh, of the USN Cruiser line. I liked it. I grounded out. It was one of my, you know, back... I played it kind of differently when there's a different meta going on, so it was still relatively strong. I kind of struggled through the Baltimore because I got it, the Baltimore before the radar, so it was kind of... <laughs> A Baltimore without the secret uh, weapon. But let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of the USN Cruiser line, what you guys would like to see uh, how to ship next, and um, let me know how you guys' are game's going. So that is it for me, guys. That was the USN Cruisers, a good line, uh, a fun line, really, and an amazing line, kind of that mid to low tier. Um, really, really enjoy playing it. But hope you guys have a good one, and good luck out there.